Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about MTG Arena and what it means. Uh, I'm taking a very interesting look at it. I do play quite a bit of mobile games, as you probably can figure. I play Fate Grand Order and I play Fire Emblem Heroes and both those games are free to play but are very expensive if you want. It's not even about winning, it's more about collecting. Uh, collecting characters that are it's possible to play both games uh, free to play and buying orbs doesn't guarantee you anything. I spent $88 on probably one of the worst characters in the game because you get unlucky. The same can be said about the Magic the Gathering cards. Here is something a little different from Pokemon. In Pokemon, when you buy some a card, you get a code and it's not free because you can purchase and resell the codes later. But it's nice to have that system in place so you can have a physical card as well as a online version, even if they don't match up necessarily. So Magic Arena, uh, the one thing that I'm worried about is how much money, how much money is going to be generated from it. I know Magic Online, there is a big discussion of it's, if it's going to die. I don't think it's a question of if, it's a question of when. Uh, you cannot have two different platforms. Uh, it, it, I've seen this in several games before. One Piece, Bleeds, like all these anime games, they only really have one main go, Dokkan for Dragon Ball Z, uh, Digimon. You can't have two different places where your fan base is playing. Your fan base will naturally gravitate towards one place. And I think it's going to be MTG Arena only because there will be more players. And the it will be easier i assume it's going to be easier to stream and more exciting like hearthstone when you look at hearthstone and you look at how many people watch hearthstone how many people uh how big these youtube channels uh, brian kibler is a very good example of a very large hearthstone youtube channel and you look at all this stuff and you realize that yes no one is streaming magic online uh, i was watching wizard of the coast uh, modern masters and it's just off of the cards you can't read them you don't know what they do it's very in if you are new or more casual or a returning player you have no idea what the cards were on magic online no matter how great the commentary is it's just not natural uh, on magic arena from what i've seen it seems more natural than the magic online and it should be easier to stream so streaming magic online is like a free advertisement it's like youtubers doing free advertisement for the program no one will stream magic sorry streaming magic arena will be a great boon for it because it's free advertisement magic online even the pros really don't like streaming it uh, brian kibler Instead of streaming Magic online, he decided to go to Hearthstone. He's not alone. A large, a large majority of the most popular streamers uh, for card games are Hearthstone. And the platform sucks for Magic. Like it, it's really that simple. So I think MTG Arena is going to change that. It's going to make it uh, easier for people to watch. It's going to grow the fan base, and there'll be more people interested in MTG Arena than Magic Online. Now, as a person who pays money to play these mobile games or these games in general i can tell you it's going to get incredibly expensive with the system they have in place the vault system and then the meter system and all of this kind of random stuff is interesting but the key here is you need four copies of the mythics the mythics tend to be the strongest cards uh, and they are not common so in Fire Emblem, you have a five, what's it? In a regular banner, you have a 3% chance of pulling a five star, which is the highest rarity. And Magic Online, depending on the drop rate, it could be much, much worse given the fact that it's a rarity higher than, there's a five star, a four star, a three star, a two star for beginners, but pretty much you pull a five star, four star, and three star. So there's three levels of rarity here although you're guaranteed a rare mythic you need to pour four of them to really make the deck and that can be insane uh, as you have probably seen from my fire emblem videos when i'm trying to pull 10 lins 
that thing gets really pricey really fast. Like it just gets outrageously, it gets into hundreds of dollars within, you know, just getting two of them or three of them. And that's what they want. So the, when you buy a magic booster pack physically, it's kind of harder to do. You have to order online, you have to wait for it. You have to go to Walmart, go to your local game store. If you buy something digitally, it's just a press of a button. And you might think that's very silly, but that's what, that's what, how they get you. Yep, button, 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 buy, 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 buy. And then at the $1,000 mark, your bank will shut down your card. I, I know that, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, not $1,000, I think it's 500 At the $500 mark, your bank, you will have to re, like call your bank to get that hold. It, they will put a hold on your bank or on your credit card. So Magic Arena is going to be quite interesting because it will be a gotcha game. It is going to be, I think, incredibly expensive to play uh, at the highest competitive level. And it's going to be designed that way. Uh, when you talk about Star, what's Star Wars Battlefront 2, they, they still have the gotcha system. They just apologized and took it away f for a moment in time. But to get that Darth Vader or the Luke, I mean, you're, you're just paying so much money. Overwatch has a gotcha system too. League of Legends with the skins slightly less because I guess you can pick what skin you want. But the gotcha systems are meant to be addicting. They're meant for you to keep spending money until it evens out. It's like flipping a coin, right? You flip a coin and you want to head. Well, if you flip a coin 10 times, you will get probably a 5-5 five, five split. You flip it 100 times, your split will almost always be 50-50 or very close to it. Um, aberration from flipping 100 coins and if you flip a thousand coins you'll probably always be 50 50 as our percentage it would be very close so um magic arena it's going to be very expensive it's going to be one of those things that uh, i might but i don't think i'm going to buy into until i know that they're going to support it one of the bad parts when you and, and this, this is the key for any gotcha game is to see developer support uh, the developer support in Magic Duels was incredibly poor. It was shut down for half the time. It was broken half the time. And then they canceled it without announcing you know, it was being canceled. Uh, Hour of Devastation was coming out. And they didn't, or I think Al Al kept. And it was like a month or a week before it was going to be released. And then they were like, oops, we are canceling that. And as soon as they cancel it, the game is dead because then the players are not, there's no updates, there's no new events. They're just going to leave. I would advise you to have a good spend limit uh, to understand that this is going to be expensive. Uh, there's no way. I know a lot of people take pride in that they're F2P and free to play. And that is in every single mobile game I have ever played in. But Magic is so competitive. It is so addicting. You, you hear stories of people stealing $500 from Walmart. I, first of all, that, that, that's a lot of Magic cards. And they can't stop themselves, right? They have an accomplice. They're trying to make money. Or I guess they're trying to play Magic the game. They literally cannot stop themselves. And it's both sad, but also a it's, it's fact. So when you make it so easy for someone to buy packs online, um, hey, your credit card's already in it. And you're ready to go. That's where the problem gets is I guarantee you once this launches, a lot of people will be broke because of no self-control. Uh, Magic players are, I've seen players who buy a box, buy like cases of stuff, and then they have to sell it all at one-tenth the price to make rent the very next uh, week. So it's, you know, cards are incredibly addicted, uh, addicting, and this should be a very addicting game. They're gonna make it so that they want you to buy as much as you can, which is the purpose of any gacha game, to be honest. I am both uh, excited and a little scared because I don't want to spend all that much money on this game, but it could be that it's a fun game. It could be that it is. it makes a lot of sense uh, to play the game as a YouTuber. I mean, maybe I can stream it. I'm still working on these streams. Should be should be a fun game. I think they did a good job. The UI and the UX look pretty good in my opinion. Um, I, I think they did a much, much better job than they did with uh, even Magic Duels. So 
we'll see. I mean, I guess I'll I'll buy some packs. You know, since I'm opening Fire Emblem anyway, I'll buy some packs. I'll um, open them on this channel. Uh, anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.